Hello again, this is Mark Terry um, with uh, Tips of Podcasts that we're doing uh, this month. This is especially uh, exciting to me because of the lineup we have, but this is in Praise of Principles. Uh, we have a great lineup of, of principles that we've been interviewing, and I'm uh, excited to have Mr. Michael Rudy Rudewick uh, online with us today. He is going to be talking. Uh, he is from Schleicher County ISD. Did I get that correct? Yes, sir. Rudy, Okay. Uh, and it is a school that I have visited, and I enjoyed the heck out of it. Rudy's a great leader in TEPSA. Uh, but Rudy, why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so hi, everybody. Like Mark said, I'm a Michael Rudy Rudewick. Um, I'm the elementary principal at El Dorado Elementary, which is in Slyker County ISD. Um, we're a town about 45 miles south of San Angelo. So uh, we're one of those that have to drive 45 miles to HEB or Walmart, yeah. anything like that. Um, we have roughly 500 students district-wide, uh, 200 of which are at the elementary. We are a pre-K through four campus. So it's split kind of non-traditionally, but um, I love it. I've been the elementary principal here since Christmas of 2015. Um, you know, I, I got a call the day after our uh, football playoff game. I was a high school teacher and coach and uh, superintendent wanted to talk about my future and I thought I was getting fired. Um, and instead he offered me the elementary principal job. And so I've been here ever since and, and haven't looked back. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I love this community. I love this town. My, my wife is from here. That's why we're, we're here. But, um, you know, I'm really invested in this school. Um, my mother-in-law was a teacher in this elementary school for mm. 29 years. Um, my wife's first few years here, she was in her mom's classroom. Oh, which, wow. Which was kind of neat. And I've got, um, you know, four kids ranging. I have a 10-year-old daughter, eight-year-old son, five-year-old son, and an 18-month-old daughter. Oh, so, uh, cool. you know, we're, we're here for the long haul. And so I'm really, I want this school to be the, the best place it can be yep. for selfish reasons, because, you know, I, I want my sure. kids to be, to be Eagles when they graduate. And yeah. um, it's like I said, you know, principal, dad. Um, we, we've got four kids, two cows, six sheep, three pigs, and a dog. So we um, we stay pretty busy. That's, that, that's me, and that's kind of the school. Now, how big is Slacker County, and how many school districts, school districts in Slacker County? Yeah, so, so we're the only school district in the county, um, and we are, we encompass, our town is just, it's a mile square. That's, our, you know, we're one of those mm -hmm. towns that still exist within the um, existing boundaries. Yeah. Uh, our county, it, it's pretty big, um, you know, square mileage wise, but population wise, there's about 2,200 people, you know, 2,000 of which reside in town and then the others that live out on, on ranches. Um, you, you know, we, we are one of those counties, we're right on the edge of oil and gas. Yep. You know, most of our people work in the oil and gas industry, but they drive to get there. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we are, you know, really just a, a true ag community, lots of ranches, um, mm -hmm. you know, sh sheep mainly, sheep and goats, you know, so, some cattle operations, but um, lots of old university lands that are leased and, and, and things like that. So we're, yeah. we're, we're pretty rural with everything that that entails. You know, you know, some people might not realize when you're in a town like that, all the duties that uh, fall to uh, an elementary principal, and we were just talking about some of those. What, what are, what? Tell me about some of the duties you have that maybe if you're in a, a Dallas Fort Worth area, you might ha not have. Yeah, so um, you know, it's we're we're small. We have an elementary principal, a middle school principal, a high school principal, no APs, a superintendent, um, and kind of an athletic director. That's our. Uh, leadership team so we, mm. we have to do we have to do a lot um, we had our first home basketball game last night so we rotated taking temperatures outside because it was pretty cold and the rest of us were inside uh, monitoring crowd monitoring mask usage um, you know we th this year um, I've, I've done the radio for our varsity games for three years but then this year they couldn't find anybody to announce over the PA system the sub varsity games so I was our sub varsity uh, public address announcer. So that, was, <laughs> that was interesting. Um, you know, so by, by the end of the week, uh, you know, my voice was, was gone a lot of times because I tried to get excited on the radio and, 
you know, try to stay biased on Thursday nights, but, you know, have that. We've got, um, you know, have to drive bus routes. We, we have to split. I was telling Mark earlier, Saturday, we have junior high boys, junior high girls, varsity boys and varsity girls basketball in four different places. Yep. We have to have an administrator at each. So, you know, we get called upon even as the elementary principal to go, you know, to a junior high game or go to a high school game. And so we, you just, you, you really get invested in the whole, in the whole process. You know, we're, yeah. we're not, you know, my title is elementary principal, but you know, if, if the high school principal sick, I may have to go cover yeah. my high school for that day. And, you know, and, th- and that may be sitting in on yards that may be, you know, handling discipline. Um, you know, just, it, it really has to be a team unified approach. Yeah. Wow. That's extremely interesting. And it was fascinating coming out to your school. I enjoyed it. Uh, but this, you know, it's really, this is a different year. Uh, I haven't got to visit any schools this year. Uh, most of them, uh, all of them said, you know, we would love to have come by, but we just can't do it. Uh, but what have you found to be your most challenging um, item this year? You know, so really when you said earlier that that was going to be the question, my wheels started turning. And one of the things kind of already addressed is just, I didn't realize until we got boots on the ground, how many more hats I was going to be wearing this year. You know, I mean, always as a, you know, a lot of this isn't new, you know, we've, it, we've been the same, you know, the whole time I've been a principal of, of having to chip in, um, you know, and we've had to wear many hats, but I, I did not realize how many more hats that I was going to have to yeah. wear. You know, not only am I, you know, the instructional leader of the campus, we, you know, we manage our budget, which is, you know, that, that's always been, but now I'm the IT guy, you know, because when yeah. parents call and they need help, you know, we have to help them learn how to log on to Schoology. Um, you know, we have to help yeah. them you know, how to connect to Wi-Fi. We, we, we do have a technology director and we're, we're very fortunate. We have an amazing yeah. amount of technology for a school this size. Um, his wife is actually the technology director in San Angelo. Ah. So they, um, he, he's phenomenal, but you know, we're kind of that front line. So we yeah. are IT guy. We are, um, you know, instructional leader. We are mm. bus driver. We are <laughs> meal delivery service. We are, um, you know, work delivery service for those yeah. that lack connectivity we are um i mean ju- just everything you know um maintenance you know we we, we had a leak mm-hmm. we, um but you know we're, we're an old building we had a, a good bit of rain and our old basement at the high school which is where a lot of our electric um, oh boy breaker boxes <laughs> are, um, came pretty close to getting flooded and so we were out there in you know rain boots and rain suits yep. you know, working to get that cleared and, and and that's not necessarily new this year but just so many things that you know we we never thought that we'd have to do even wearing as many hats just yeah that that hack that hat rack just keeps getting added yeah. and yep. and it's things that you know you just you just don't know you know somebody will call with something and you know now you have to be the a counselor to a parent or you know a a grief counselor. I tell you, one one of the hardest things that I've had to do this year, and, and really probably ever, um, we had a, a middle school teacher and coach whose dad was struggling with COVID in the hospital, mm-hmm. and um, her pre-K son was exposed, mm-hmm. and I, I couldn't get a hold of him on the phone. So b- being as small as we are, and she's actually a, a distant relative in, in the family, mm-hmm. you know, go by the house and had to knock on the door and tell her her son was exposed to the virus while her dad was, I mean, really fighting for his life. And wow. just to see that, you know, emotion on her face, you know, that's just, that, that's something that, you, you know, you don't ever think that you're, you're going to have to do. So, yeah. you know, just, just per, per, on a personal level, it's that, you know, just having to wear so many mm. hats, um, you know, big yeah. picture kid wise, I think here it's the, just a lack of connectivity. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to go remote and, and we actually stopped offering remote instruction um, kind of after that second six weeks because of, you know, just lack of participation and those mm-hmm. kids falling behind. And so, and we, and we were pretty good anyways. We had about 15% had chosen remote learning to begin with. And uh, we, we brought all those back. And, um, but, but, but now we've got, you know, the kids that co- go into the 14 day quarantine period or, or kids yeah. that, um, you, you know, we've started getting doctor's notes now because we have had, you know, an uptick in cases here. And so we'd get doctor's notes where the doctors recommend them not being at school. And we honor that. 
And so yeah. just bat battling that connectivity issue, you know, we, and even the kids that have internet, it, it's not great out here. It, you yeah. know, um, I, I talked to some of my friends in the bigger towns and, and they talked about all that they're able to do. And even outside of education, just, you know, streaming services and, and things yeah. like that, you know, we can't watch Netflix on two TVs at once because yeah. we just don't have the, the bandwidth and we pay for the most bandwidth that is available for us. You know, we just, yeah. and, and so we're talking the, the max that we can get. And that's what, like I have at my house is, um, is 20 megs, you, you know, yeah. wow. it's just not. So, so we, you know, our teachers work really hard up here. And, and one thing that's fortunate um, this summer, we got our first uh, fiber optic line um, connected. We're in a, a co-op here and um, in this region. And, and this region stretches from mm. uh, kind of Bronx is the northern yeah. bank, all the way down to Del Rio and then Brownwood to, I guess, Reagan County is the furthest mm -hmm. west. Uh, but we, we got fiber optics. So here at school, our internet increased by a factor of 100. Wow. So our teachers work their tails off up here, get great things going. And then the kids can't, you know, do it <laughs> at home because they don't have the bandwidth. Or, yeah. Yeah. You know, what, what we see here, because we are so interconnected, um, you know, we might have one family that's at home and they have kids at each campus. And so yeah. the, the parents have to prioritize. They only have enough bandwidth for one kid to be working online. At uh. And so that that's just... Yeah. That, that's been our biggest battle and um you know the, the state did sent we bought some of those hot spots that the the state was you know yeah. really for and, and we got those in and that that's helped but it's just that connectivity in this rural yeah. setting is, is hard yeah yeah i agree and i and i tell you what one of the worst things i ever had to do with a as a principal is go to a parent whose kid was uh, in a car accident and uh, severely injured uh, very very difficult uh, kind of a thing. In fact, one of the kids died and uh, just to have to be the one to go get the parent. But people don't see that with principals. The principals do those kind of things. Yeah, we're, they, uh, especially in these small towns, we're such leaders, you know, of the community. Mm -hmm. That's so, Sometimes we don't realize that until we have to go through things like this. Yep, yep. Well, you got a lot of power. Well, you know what? Uh, let's jump from that to something a little more positive. Uh, each week I, or each uh, session, I ask somebody to share something, an idea, a practice that other principals can uh, try to this week. And uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with climate, a lot of it has to do with other things, organization, whatever. Uh, you have some uh, idea that uh, our, our principals can use? Yeah, you know, I think the first thing is, is if you don't already uh, get to know your staff this week. Know, know what makes them tick, know what they need from you. And, um, you know, and do that on a, not just a whole staff level, but, a, you, know, you know, even an individual teacher or, or grade level. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we have all these ideas and, and principals have great ideas, but then we also have to realize that we all work at different campuses and in different places. And so if you don't know your staff, get to know them this week, you know, mm -hmm. fill out a survey of just what they need, you know, what, what they like, what they don't like, mm. uh, but get to know your staff, because if you don't know what makes your staff tick, um, you know, as far as morale and, and what they need, th then you can be working really hard as a principal trying to give them something that you think they need, but it's not what they need. So yeah. really get to know your staff. And, and then, and then if you do know your staff, you know, just do something that, you know, re retains a sense of normalcy for them. So for, for instance, yeah. I, I really feel that the most important room here at our, at El Dorado Elementary is our kitchen. Um, you know, my, my teachers love to eat. They love to, you know, just be social and just that fellowship yep. that, that comes with eating. Yeah. And, you know, so in the past we've had monthly luncheons, you know, we've done the luncheon group and, and that is the, the best day of the year. You know, I, I stay out sometimes, sometimes I'm in, but you know, you hear laughter coming from there when they're all together. And, you know, that's the best thing to hear is your, your staff laughing together. And, um, you know, this year we're, we're kind of trying to stay away from that because of, of mm -hmm. safety precautions. Yeah. But yeah. I, I know that that's something that my staff craves. So we had a work day. And um, so we, we set up a bunch of desks. Uh, you know, I uh -huh. went to our, our storage room is an old uh, shower facility because our, yeah. our gym was the original gym. 
and you know pulled desks out and set them up in the gym and we had our, our potluck luncheon set up in there where we were able to spread out you know stay safe and but still eat and laugh together yeah so yeah just that, but that's what my staff needed you know they they, they don't need that they don't really like um you know gifts or things like that that they, they enjoy being able to to have the time to come together and and just fellowship together so mm. you know just be creative and, and yep. give that sense of normalcy that your staff needs i like that because you do need that uh when's this going to be over why can't we why can't we be together i think that's a great idea uh finally you, I, I know you very well. We've known each other for several years, uh, and you've been a leader in TEPSA, and I've watched you uh, grow in that in that field. Um, and yeah, I feel you. I see you always having an upbeat attitude and a positive attitude. And uh, a lot of folks, uh, when they hear you're a principal, they go, "Oh, I could never do that." And it's it's almost like, but but I see principals having a lot of joy, enjoying their work, enjoying something about being a principal that they enjoy. So Rudy, what, what gives you joy being a principal? Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you, you've got to be happy, you know, if you can't have fun doing something, it's not worth doing, you know, yeah. uh, and, and, you know, just talk, I don't know if there's very many principals that are also the radio announcers, you know, but, but I, I have fun on there and, you know, and people say, you know, you know, they, they love that you get excited and, and I just tell them if I can't have fun doing it, it's not worth mm -hmm. doing. And so, yeah. Yeah, you have to find that joy. And for mm. me, it, it's getting around the kids, um, you know, because kids are resilient. Kids are, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to say this too loud in case my staff hears, but kids, <laughs> kids are tougher than adults, uh, you know, you know, most of the time. And and, and they, they don't know that much difference going on. You know, they've adapted to this and, and mm -hmm. they still have fun. So if I'm feeling down, I go get around the kids. You know, we, I, I go, I go to the PE gym and, and just see them in there you know, and really here this year, it's not really the gym, it's go outside because we're yeah. PE classes outside as much as possible. But, you know, get out there and watch them play in pickleball and, and get out there and, you know, walk over to the tennis courts because they're playing tennis over there and, and ju just see the kids in their, you know, natural environment, having, yeah. fun, you know, and, and in the classroom too, you know, and, and go in the classroom and see them. And, and really, I just think yesterday we had, we had to quarantine an entire pre-K class mm. um, through Thanksgiving break, and then they were supposed to return Tuesday. And we had one um, parent drop off the kid, you know, and then they came and picked him up. But then that parent was late picking up that uh, the, the sibling that day. Mm. And so we had to call and say, hey, you know, your, your kid's here. And just here in the background, that girl that's in quarantine, hi, Mr. Rudowick, you know, yeah. just yelling in the background. You know, I mean, the kids are happy. Kids are yeah. joyful. Go get around those kids. I mean, that, that's why we're in this business. You know, we we all started as teachers to, you know, to try to influence and impact kids. And, yep. and the roles have changed. You know, we, we've grown into leadership roles as principals. And now we, you know, we think that we impact adults. And, and, and we do. But we impact adults so that kids can grow. So yeah. just go get around those around those kids and and you will you will find joy yeah um, just yeah it's you got to have fun that's a great answer and i tell you what you get around the kids and if you're not joyful and you're not happy they're going to know it right away yes sir they are there's they they've got a sense about that so great suggestion rudy and great interview i appreciate what you do out in slacker county uh again if you've never visited a rural almost frontier school uh, as a principal, I would highly recommend that you do that. Uh, they deal with some of the same issues you do in an urban or suburban setting. And then they have some vastly different uh, things that they deal with as well. Uh, Rudy, you're, a, you're an asset to our uh, profession. I appreciate you being on here today. And I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed our little talk today. And thank you so much, Rudy. All right, thanks, Mark. You bet.